It's the end of the week, but the start of Luke and Lewis. Check it out, check it out. Let's go. On 101.9. You ready? The Fox. Check it out, check it out. It's Luke and Lewis on Sunday nights. Welcome to the show, everyone. Come on. <laughs> You heard our glorious new intro. We've got a great show coming up for you guys. We're going to be talking about Donald Trump and his shocking confession that nobody's ever realized before. And Lewis, big news coming out of the Winter Olympics today. That's correct. Professional streaker Mark Roberts strikes again. Yes. Hit the figure going... skating event and I'll, oh, man, I'm going to cover it next. Wait, we're going to, well, he won't be covered, but we'll be covering him. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a giant brief celebrity interview coming up. Aria Award winner, ladies and gentlemen. Get pumped. Luke and Lewis on Sunday nights. Lewis uh, was watching uh, the Winter Olympics, and yeah, last night at the Games, mm -hmm. they had a streaker in the figure skating. Oh, Excellent brilliant. television. Yeah. Figure skating? Jeez, yeah. Did he have a good figure? Uh, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he, he also was lacking the skates. He went on in shoes. So well, that's, he... that's just underprepared. Yeah. See, I mean, why would you wear shoes? Just take the shoes off. They're useless. Yeah, he came on and had a fall, actually. So he jumped the fence, yeah. had a bit of a slip, no surprises, and then uh, was escorted off very quickly. But much to my How surprise... How did escort him off, though? Was it... Because it's on the ice. Were the security guards wearing skates? I think the, other, the, the staff wear skates. So he right. was outnumbered. He didn't have skates. He, he came was... in... It was poorly planned streak. Yeah, not very good. But the thing... Interesting the thing was, the fine was only $45. That's... That's, that's a bargain cheaper. streak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's cheaper than a ticket to the games. Yeah. That's oh, a... true. People <laughs> people may have paid more to watch the figure skating. Yeah. He got to live it. I bet they spent more on the food that they charge you at the stadium yeah. than he paid to get naked and go on the ice. Yeah. That's incredible. Uh, the thing is, though, it turns out uh. this bloke, it's, it wasn't his first streak. Turns out his name's Mark Roberts. And yeah. he's a professional streaker. He's a, he has his own Wikipedia page. Really? I've looked up some of his past streaks. Yeah. He's got an impressive track record. How, well, how can you be a professional? I mean, a professional implies that it's your job. Yeah, right? he got That's sponsored. That's the definition of professional. Well, you're ready. His best one, his most successful streak yet was a sponsored streak. 2004 right. Super Bowl. Yeah. Got paid a million bucks. That's insane. Only who? got fined a thousand. Oh, well, that's a giant profit. That's good, that's good, that's good streaking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of people go, go try and gamble that kind of money at Crown. Yeah. He's all the way up. He's just paying a thousand. He's walked out with a million. Mm, just take your pants off. <laughs> don't need a, don't <laughs> who, need a gamble. Who paid him? Huh? Who paid him? I'm not sure. Who paid him? Oh, well, the advertising didn't work, did it? No. <laughs> it's not great advertising. Should have been wearing one of their t-shirts. But um, yeah, couldn't believe it. He's also done some uh, more impressive runs. He's hit the US Open before... Um, he's also done the English Premier League, had a run in, a nude run in with David Beckham. What a treat for Dave. That's great. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's advertising underwear all the time, but yeah. this other guy's committing much more, taking them off. But my big question is, where, where's he going to strike next? He, well, that's true. How, do you know how many times he has streaked? Well, like I'm not sure period? how many times in total. I mean, he's done every event. He's done not just sports. He's done Mr. Universe competitions, Miss <laughs> Universe competitions. He's done it all. If there's yeah. an event on, he'll probably streak at it if you're paying the right amount. But here's but the thing. Would he wear clothes to a streaking event? <laughs> See, no. that'd, that'd really mess with him. Mm. You dress like an Eskimo <laughs> at a streaking event. <laughs> that'd be rude. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think this guy could strike at any moment. Commonwealth Games are coming up in Australia. Mm. He, could, he, he, could, he could hit us there. Well, that's the thing. Where will he strike next? We were thinking Commonwealth Games because he likes to get one headline about once every six months. That's the next okay. big big event to hit the world stage. So he's stage. pretty much due for one. Why don't we throw it to the listeners? Yeah. 131060, give us a call. Where do you think he's going to strike next? Or even where would you like him to strike next? Yeah. Do you have you a local a... sports match that needs a bit of a, I don't know, needs a bit of excitement this weekend? <laughs> have you got your daughter's 11th birthday coming up that you would yep. like him to <laughs> maybe maybe avoid that one, no, actually? 13th as as birthday. Said that. Yeah, yeah. Thir <laughs> at least 13. <laughs> so give us a call, 131060. Where would you like the professional streaker to strike next? It's Luke and Lewis on Sunday nights. We've been talking about the newly discovered professional streaker that recently streaked uh, at the Winter Olympics. Uh, it was pretty funny. And then, Luke, you Googled him. Turns out this is his full-time job. Yeah, so initially I was just like, oh, great. Streak at the Olympics. Love it. Yeah. Gave it a bit of Google. Oh, this guy's a season streaker. He's a professional and he's been hitting the world, like big sporting events on the world stage for years. His name's Mark Roberts, has his own Wikipedia page with, by the way, if you want to look at it, there is a picture of his junk on his own Wikipedia page, which yeah. means to think, I think he's just uploaded that himself. <laughs> 
So <laughs> a, a nice little selfie where it's flattering. But yeah. what, what gets me is he used to have his junk out in every streak, but now he started to cover it up. Yeah, he had What's a little. happened to you, Willie? He had Mark? a little monkey sock. <laughs> <laughs> the people want to know. So we threw it to the callers. We think he's going to strike again. So we thought, where would you like Mark to strike next? We've got our first caller on the line. Christy, where would you like um, the professional streaker to strike? I reckon the Melbourne Cup. Oh. That'd be a good streak. Okay. That would be. Slide would... things up a bit in before it gets to the big, the big run. So know? do you think before the main race? Yeah, oh, even in between the other races, because to be honest, it's kind of boring before it gets to the big race. Yeah, it'd spice things up. That I'm thinking true. during yeah. the big race, as soon as oh. the horses hit the straight, uh, everyone around the world's watching. It's the race that stops the nation. Boom, bang, The Mark Roberts, the junk that stops the nation. <laughs> That's the story. Front I was page thinking, what if, he, what if he entered in his own horse as a naked jockey? I reckon that'd be a good streak. Christy. I feel like that would hurt a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Although, you know, all the horses are naked, aren't they? So yeah. really, he'd just be joining in. Yeah. Christy, yeah. would you like to see um, Mark, you know, like out on the actual race course during a race? Or would you think that's a bit a little unsafe? Maybe if he did have, you just mentioned he had a monkey sock. Maybe yep. he had a horse sock. So yep. it looks like he was actually like riding it. a mini horse. Yep. I like it. I, I do like that, Chrissy. Thanks for the suggestion. We'll go to uh, Connor now. Connor, where would you like the streaker to strike next? My VCE exams. All oh, right. <laughs> is, and why is that, Connor? Oh, I don't know. Just to get out of the exams. It would certainly <laughs> certainly break up a history exam or something. Yeah, that's true. Haven't you, haven't you been studying for it, Connor? Oh, uh, I study. I actually stopped studying to call in. Oh, well, we're going to need a streaker sent directly to your house then, mate. Oh, no, please don't. <laughs> don't worry. We don't have those powers. No. We don't even know where you live, mate. Lewis is leaving the studio. He's coming <laughs> to your house now. All right, thanks, Connor. Um, Celeste, uh, where would you like the streaker to strike next? Prince Harry's wedding. Yep, yes. love it. That's it. I like this. A what? royal streak. <laughs> I think it would be fantastic. Just, yeah. Just to add a bit of flavour. Yep. Yeah, brilliant. And uh, Do, uh, Although, Christy, uh, oh, wait, is it Christy? Yes. Yeah, it's Christy. Celeste. Celeste. Sorry, yes. Christy was the last call. Celeste, yes. I don't think the Queen would be too happy with that one. Look, I think she needs a bit of spicing up herself these days. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Why don't, they, why don't they just make it official and the Queen could join him? Mm. <laughs> Put that on the $5 note. <laughs> Luke, it's time to talk about something that has shocked the nation. Donald Trump's made a shocking admission after he was almost exposed by his own head. <laughs> uh, recently, footage of him getting onto a plane came out, and because obviously a yeah. plane, or, well, the engines are going, it's very, very windy. Yep. He takes a giant Air Force One jet, so it was It was like a wardrobe around. malfunction, but it had nothing to do with his clothes. It was like, it was just a head malfunction. <laughs> his head just acted incorrectly. Yeah, which could be a good analogy for the entire presidency, really. <laughs> it's one big malfunction. <laughs> um, so he was getting onto the plane, and the engines blew his hair around so much, and we finally saw where his bald spot is. Now, which normally a bald spot is on the front or, or the back of yeah. someone's head. Donald Trump's is, is like right down the bottom on the back. It's yeah. amazing. I mean, I saw it first and went, oh, good on Midnight Oil. That's Peter Garrett in a private jet. <laughs> and then I went, oh, no, wait, that's Trump. <laughs> yeah. So when this footage came out, obviously people were replaying it, showing screenshots of the bald spot because finally... It is being exposed that it is real. Yep. So that's when Donald Trump, during a big speech in front of thousands of people, finally came up and made this shocking admission. I try like hell to hide that ball spot, folks. I work harder. Doesn't look bad. Hey, we're hanging in. We're hanging in there, right? Together, we're hanging in. It does look bad, Donald. <laughs> it really does. It does. Then I think it, what's funny is him, him like trying to talk about how we're hanging in there. Mate, that's your bald spot. Don't yeah. give it to me, all right? I'm not was, helping you with that. I was loving it. Like, <laughs> if anything, don't put it away. No. It was great. I'm actually fascinated by his hair because... It's really an engineering feat. I think yep. a lot of people think that he wears a toupee. Oh, no. That's all Donnie. Every morning, there is just people, like, I reckon there's a team of people, they set up scaffolding around his ears, <laughs> and then they go, let's get to work, and then 40 minutes later, he walks out of there looking like a new man. Yeah, I'll use hairspray every now and then to slick my hair back, but that's another <laughs> operation, right? That's a whole new ball game. But I do find it funny that he basically admitted it you during do have a, a Trump speech. Cut, by the way. A what? Yeah, for those listening, you don't 
no, Lewis has a trump cut. Yeah. And, um, well, you slick it back, but I can promise you that I don't have a bald spot. But if I get mm, on any jets in the future, mm, I might just also, wear a hat. He, also he claims. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's funny that basically he wasted thousands of people's dime just confessing to something that everyone knows. Like, we know he has a bald spot, but he felt the need to confess it. So I, I've been a little bit inspired, and I think I've, I've got a confession to make, Luke. I, um, I've got a couple of confessions too, but you go first. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know this mm-hmm. about me, um, but I'm, I'm very tall. Oh, oh my god, really? Yeah, I don't know if you've known this by looking at me or hanging out with me every day. Or... Hey guys, for those listening, Lewis is six foot eight. Sometimes. I didn't notice until now. <laughs> well, you've seen me duck to get into a door frame, yeah. so I just thought I would make that confession. That, okay. That's the reason why I duck to get into doors. I mean, it's because I'm tall. Once I watched you dunk a basketball without jumping, but I was like, fluke. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, yes. my confession. Mm hmm. Because I have no outstanding physical features, yeah. my name's Luke, in case you didn't know. Mate, I've been doing the Luke and Lewis show for a long time. Yep. Had no idea that the Luke component of that show was you. And I didn't want it to come out like this, but it's Trump's inspired me. I appreciate your honesty, mate. I've got one more for you. Yeah. <laughs> Underneath these clothes... Sorry, it's, it's a little bit embarrassing. Underneath these clothes, mate, I... I'm completely naked. Oh my god, we're on radio, Lewis. <laughs> you can't say that. I've got one more, yeah. and I didn't want to bring this up on air, but yeah. I guess we're being forced to now. Recently, mm-hmm. I've gone from seven wheat bix yeah. down to six. It's emasculating, but you don't mess with early morning indigestion. <laughs> and I just want to say to Brett Lee, if he's listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, my final confession, Luke. And this is to the listeners as well. Um, We actually have a radio show called Luke and Lewis. And And another bombshell. We're on air right now. (laughs) I'm sorry, guys, to find out this way, but you're listening to us right now on the radio. It's too much honesty, guys. Go to a song, Mike. We can't do it anymore. Today, we are going to be doing uh, a regular segment that we do. If you're just tuning in, we are on Sunday nights from 10 until midnight. So it's very hard to get giant celebrities into the show, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard to get, like, yeah, yeah, Robbie Williams is in town at the moment. He's doing his show right now. Hard to get him in the studio for an interview. So often when celebs are walking around the radio station here... Because other shows, they get guests all the time. Drive shows, they get them. Brecky shows, they get them. We never, ever get guests, but... We do always see guests walking around the offices going to talk to much other bigger, much more important shows, and there is a very brief moment from walking from the entrance to another studio that we can ambush these celebrities yep. and try and get a brief celebrity interview out of them. We usually hide behind the desk, pop out with a recorder. We ask the big celebs one question, one question only. Uh, we'll often cut them off if they start answering two, two well, questions. Well, they, they're very busy, and yeah. we're very busy as well. It's more even, even if it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. we don't really need more than 30 no. seconds from them. So. We're, we're busy guys, Arnie, all right? <laughs> so that's why we'd like to do this segment, which is... Getting the biggest celebs and asking the hard questions. Well, hard question. This is Luke and Lewis's Brief Celebrity Interviews. That's right. It's Luke and Lewis's Brief Celebrity Interviews. Who do we have on the show today? We've got a big scoop. Very big, uh, very big celebrity, uh, very big scoop coming up. ARIA Award winners, Australian ARIA Award winners, boys from Canberra. You might be familiar with them. The boys from Peking Duck. Yes. Huge get for our show. Mm-hmm. They're, they're very big stars, and they were, they were so big, in fact, that they were performing on the rooftop for some other show, and after the performance... We interrupted, and... <laughs> we snuck backstage, and we managed to find half of Peking, Peking Duck, Duck. And we pulled out our recorders, and we asked them one question. We caught up with Ruben from Peking Duck, and this is how it went. We're here with Ruben from Peking Duck. Ruben, do you have a hidden talent? Ah, oh, a hidden talent. I can fly a plane. Brilliant. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much That's for joining it. us. Okay. What? He can fly a plane. Ruben from Peking Duck can that fly is a, scoop. a plane. Tell me one other show that you've heard that on. You can't. 
Because why would he talk about that on another show? <laughs> 60 Minutes has nothing on us. We're the only show that truly found out whether or not Ruben is out there in the skies and flying like a real duck, and he is. Obviously, a current affair is going to be reporting that tomorrow, but Absolutely. hey, Tracy, we got there first. Yeah, might, might even make international headlines, but yeah. that's not the only scoop we have for you tonight because not only did we find 50% of Peking Duck, we also found the other 50%. We found Peking, and then we found Duck. <laughs> Coming up, we're going to be doing our brief celebrity interview with Adam. This is Luke and Lewis on The Fox. Luke, we just had uh, one of the biggest exposés in the history of radio on our show in the last break. If you missed it, we have a regular segment on the show called Brief Celebrity Interviews, because we're on Sunday nights from 10pm until midnight. We can't get big celebrity guests on the show, so we just ambush them in the corridors while they're on their way to talk to a more important show. Yep. We just uh, were, we just were, had a brief celebrity interview with half of Peking Duck. We spoke to Ruben, and what he said changed right, changed the radio landscape forever. It turns out uh, Ruben from Peking Duck can duck and fly a plane. Now, yes. I know we got excited the last break, like what a scoop. I was thinking about it. I don't think he can. Really? Like, why would he be able to fly a plane? He's a DJ. Yeah, you'd save heaps <laughs> on flights, man. And really, I that's, can, that's, maybe that's... a remote control. Maybe, but that's that's really living up to his name, Peking Duck. Maybe he's the duck part of Peking Duck, and he can actually fly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Maybe. But you thought that was the only scoop we have for you, uh, for you. but no, because we're doing this one more time. Getting the biggest celebs and asking the hard questions. Well, hard question. This is Luke and Lewis's Brief Celebrity Interviews. That's right. We interviewed half of Peking Duck because they were performing here, but you might be surprised they travel together when they perform. Yes, so they're not a solo act. No. Um, and the reason why we saved this one for last is because, boy, oh boy, once you hear this, you will never listen to Australian music, especially Peking Duck, the same way again. Yes. Because we interviewed Adam, and we had one question lined up for him that usually divides a crowd, but I was not expecting the answer. That he gave us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our brief celebrity interview with Adam from Peking Duck. It's over another Luke and Lewis brief celebrity interview. We're here with Adam from Peking Duck. Adam, you. do you prefer Pepsi or Coke? Well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a bit on the fence. Uh, you know, I used to be a Pepsi guy, but now I'm a Coke guy. Oh, really? Whoa, <laughs> that's, that's a scoop. scoop. <laughs> <laughs> what? He's a Coke guy? But, well, who could believe it? The thing that got me was the switch. Who yeah. goes? From a Pepsi guy, from being a Coke guy, you you stick to your one and you stick with it forever. That's absolutely incredible. And so now we know many things about him. He's not a Diet Coke man, nor is he a Diet Pepsi man. He is a full-blooded Coke man. He and likes full sugar, and that's why his performance was fully sugared. <laughs> Sorry, guys, didn't have a joke there. It was very sweet. Mike, hit the joke <laughs> alarm, please. We don't have the joke alarm, but <laughs> those are the kind of scoops and terrible jokes that you can expect from our show on Fox. This is Luke and Lewis. Come to our show for the great interviews, not the jokes. <laughs> Luke and Lewis on Sunday nights on the Fox. Come on, let's do it. We're doing a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis. Now, I know why everyone's listening to our show right now. It's because... Uh, the great jokes and humour? Well, no. <laughs> it's yeah. because everyone... That was, listen- that was a bit of a wild yeah, guess. That was, that was a huge a little bit shot. out there. <laughs> Lewis, everyone's listening because everyone knows to win big prizes on radio, mm. you listen to Sunday night radio close to midnight. That's where all the big cash is going. That's where that's the radio station... That's where most station, people are listening. Yeah. So that's, that's where, where they throw most of the money at our show. Yeah. So, so after the break, you might have heard hit coin running on the station during the week, mm. but you ain't heard Luke and Lewis's flip coin We're gonna coming up away next. Stacks? Well, not well, stacks. Maybe one or two coins on the show. <laughs> Luke, on commercial radio, they're always playing cash giveaway prizes. Yep. Um, every day on this station, you can win various amounts of money, giveaways. It's all happening, but Sunday nights... Mm, mm. they did, Well, actually, Sunday nights from 6 to 8, you might actually win maybe a DVD mm. that was out the back that nobody really wanted. In 2004, but, perhaps. But 10pm <laughs> ten, 10 until midnight, there's not much of a prize budget. In fact, no. there's not much of a budget to pay the presenters, really. And you might have seen <laughs> this uh, promotion going around on the Fox during the week. Fox FM's Hit Coin. Hear the hit and win some serious coin. In 15 minutes. On the Fox.
Now, just before you get excited, listeners, we are not playing that over the next hour. No. We definitely aren't. But we'll explain the rules of the game just to tease you anyway. So what uh, the station's running at the moment is hit coin. It's where if you're listening to a song, like they say one song that you've got to listen to during the day. It's a classic thing. Then if you hear it during the day, you call up, you can win anywhere from $100 to $1,000. Yes. Very big prize pool there. It's running over. It's It's... One of the bigger prizes we're running at the moment. Mm. Now, I don't. I don't really want to. I don't want to talk bad on my employer, but uh, there is no five hundred dollar coin. Here's the They're thing: calling it hit coin, but I don't think there's <laughs> no. the lowest amount you can win is a hundred dollars. There's no one hundred dollar coin. So, I mean, we don't really want to. We don't usually do this, but we'll give you a bit of a peek behind the scenes in radio. Mm. We've been snooping around the building. We're here alone on a Sunday night. We've checked every storage places, like we've checked cupboards. Just for the prize. We're there's looking. Not, there's for not money. coins around. We're desperate. We're trying to steal from our employer, but we figured out in the process. There are no coins anywhere. I think this isn't really hit coin. It's more of a hit bank transfer. Yeah. <laughs> which is false advertising. Now, in defense of our station, I don't want them to get sued. So what I think we should do, Luke, is we should run our own game called... Uh, called... Luke, Luke and Lewis's Flip Coin. Yeah, that's right. Where we will actually give away a real coin. This is not a joke. We have all of the coins here. Yeah, there's a total prize full uh, of about three dollars, I think thirty five cents. You can win any coin ranging from five cents to two dollars. Granted, this doesn't sound like a jackpot. It sounds like a man shaking five coins, yeah. <laughs> and that's because that's exactly what this game is. It sounds is. like a guy who's forgotten to top up his Mikey and is struggling for the train. <laughs> you know what? I sound like I'm I'm about to ask you for two dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Spare any change, but that's not what this yeah. game is. We're giving out change. So what we're going to do is if you give us a call 131060 we're going to pick one of these coins out of the glass at random we want you to choose heads or tails we're going to flip it and if you get it correct you will win that coin you could win five cents or you could win the jackpot two dollars i mean that's unlikely that the two dollars is going to go off tonight yeah. uh we might carry it over to next week we'll it's a see a lot of money it is it is a big jackpot but if you want it thirteen ten sixty, give us a call and let's play luke and lewis's oh, the coin. phones are lighting up <laughs> people <laughs> want that coin <laughs> <laughs> we are playing a giant cash giveaway game aren't we luke yep it's called luke and lewis's flip coin you may have heard hit coin uh playing during the day here on this radio station that's where listeners you call up and uh, during the day, you hear a song, and you can win a bunch of cash. But yeah. we noticed, hey, we looked around the station. There's no coins. There are no coins. They're not actually giving hands. you hit coins. They're giving you like hit bank transfers. Yeah, which is just false advertising. So we're trying to protect the station from being sued, and we're running our own uh, segment, which is called Luke and Lewis's Flip Coin. Yeah, where you can win an actual real coin. We have all five coins. There are from five cents to two dollars. I have them in a glass here. Yep, and people have called us up on thirteen ten sixty to win anywhere from five cents to two dollars. Yeah. I don't know how the station is going to pay for this. This is absolutely ridiculous. We're breaking the bank. The accountants outside yeah. the studio are shaking their heads, but they can't stop us. We've locked the doors. <laughs> We're going to give away $2 maximum, and there's nothing they can do about it. Up first, we've got Naomi. Naomi, why do you want to oh. win this coin? Oh, well, you know, I'm a bit partial for a coin and, you know, a bit of church money in the, in the wallet. It's yep. handy. That's true. Now, you can buy yourself some two-minute noodles, perhaps. <laughs> Only if you get the $1, though. Only if you get one of the jackpots. Five cents will not get you noodles. Now, Naomi, do you have a coin preference before I pick it out of the, of the glass I have here? Oh, uh, look, you can't, you've got to go for gold. $2. $2. She's going That's for true. it. All right, Lewis All right, is I'm currently... Closing my eyes. I'm going to pick one out of the cup. drawing his hand in. I mean, I just realised now you can probably a tell... a very small cup. Um, He's I've, got one. What have I got? Pulling out. Oh, you're playing for the two dollars. It's coming out of Let's go! Oh my lord! <laughs> I okay. can't believe it, Naomi. Now don't get too excited, Naomi. You haven't won yet because you now. <laughs> Sorry, I got too excited as well, <laughs> Naomi. Let's just both calm down. All right, everyone, breathe. All right, Naomi. I need you yeah. to tell me heads or tails to win two dollars. What do you think? Tails never fails. Tails never fails. All right, like you ready? Do you want to flip yeah, it, mate? I'm gonna flip it. All right, All right Luke's gonna flip it. Flipping in one, two, three. It's hit the desk. It's heads. It's heads. Oh, oh sorry, no. Naomi. Two dollars goes back in the jackpot. Oh, I'm so sorry, boy. Do you know how much? I mean, this just shows you that we're not rigging this because if the jackpot had gone off first, it would have seemed a bit suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Naomi, but we will be playing this game every week, so call back next Sunday. Um, oh, will we? 
<laughs> yes, we are. All right. <laughs> uh, our next caller, Beck. Which coin would you like to win tonight? Two dollars. Two dollars. All right. Well, it'd be a bit weird if someone said ten cents. <laughs> that, that would be. All right. So I'm closing my eyes here. I'm gonna I'm gonna pour a coin out. See what we get. Lewis is grabbing for the coin. Mate, you should have got a wider cup. I definitely should have. <laughs> what have we got? 50 cents. Ooh, that's Pretty not bad. Beck. All right. Now, Beck, heads or tails to win 50 cents, what's your pick? Um, tails. Tails, all right. Beck, I'm flipping now. It's He's hit the desk. It. Oh, wait, what'd she say? She said tails. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Beck, <laughs> oh, <not> heads. <laughs> it's heads. Sorry, but it's going Thank back you. in the jackpot, so... <laughs> I'm not- so sorry, Beck. I mean, it would have cost us more to send it out to you anyway, so really, it's not a huge loss. <laughs> All right, so now we're down to our last caller. Cam, welcome to the show. No one has won yet. Which coin would you like to win tonight? I'd be happy with anything. <laughs> Even five cents? Even five cents. Even five cents. All right, well, I'm going to... Would you like to pick it out of the hat this time? I am putting my hand in the cup, and you are playing for Cam... Yep. Five cents. Five cents. Yeah. Oh, mate, Cam. Do you reckon you can win it? Oh, I reckon I could. What will you tell your kids and your family in the future? Do you, will you tell them about the times that you won a radio competition? Yeah, I won a month for that extra five cents. Yeah, great. <laughs> That'll go straight all to right. their inheritance. All, all, right, all the best, Cam. What Lewis are you is thinking? about to flip the coin now. Heads or tails, mate? Heads. All right, here we go. And it's tails. Oh, nobody's won. Nobody's won a flip coin. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, mate. How Thank you very much for playing. Um, unfortunately, nobody's won the flip coin. But the accountants were absolutely right. <laughs> yes, everybody outside the studio is celebrating. We almost said the station broke. Sorry, but thank you very much for playing, everyone. Tune in next week for another round of flip <laughs> coin. It's Luke and Lewis. Luke, we've got a, we've got a break coming up, but uh, after the break, we're going to be talking about something that you keep bringing up. Well, you're renowned on this show for being unintentionally rude to people. Oh, sometimes intentionally. <laughs> well, yeah. That's a little bit unfair. Sometimes I'm very mean on purpose. Yeah, well... But- <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm Mate, sorry. Mostly to Radio Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's our panel uh, operator. But now, Lewis, after the break, I, look, I don't think you, I still don't think you have even realized what you've done. But after the break, oh, I want to fill you in. Oh, this happened in the last couple of days. I know you don't even know what I'm about to bring up. Nope. But after the break, you've been rude to someone, and I just want to know why. And I want you to explain yourself. Brilliant. Let's see if I meant it or not. <laughs> that was the Veronica's. Only the musical classics played on our show. Mm-hmm. Isn't that right, Luke? Yep, hooking us up with some great tunes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I'll just leave on that one. <laughs> let's, let's wrap up the show now. No, Lewis, um... Some people, I mean, people who don't know you would know you're very tall, mm-hmm. um, six foot eight. Yes. Quite skinny. Oh, I would, I would say yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't, I literally could not yep. argue with you on and that one. And sometimes have a reputation on this show for being unintentionally rude to people. Yes. It's a problem that I struggle with. And most often it's always when I'm trying to be nice. Like I'm like, I'm going to say something nice and I just mess it up and offend people. Yeah. And the other night, um, again, it's always unintentionally because I still don't think you know about this. The other night, we were out uh, doing stand-up comedy at a comedy gig. Yes. And uh, I was speaking backstage to a few people and uh, someone who we hadn't seen in a while uh, came up to us and obviously, for the you... Yeah. Gaining weight is a is a goal and is a compliment. Oh yeah, it's an eternal struggle of mine. I'm always trying to put on weight. Yeah. I'm always hitting the gym. You know, I'm so tall that a normal weight for someone else looks incredibly thin on me. You're just trying to fill out a t-shirt. Yeah, that's that's and my only goal. I think I can speak on the behalf of most other people, which is no one else is trying to gain weight. What do you mean? The rest of the population is yeah. in a pretty much an active pursuit to lose it yeah. at all times. Now, right. you walked up to someone who we hadn't seen in a while and straight away went, oh, oh. you've gained weight. Yeah, I and I knew straight away, I felt like your interpreter. Like <laughs> Straight away, I was like... Oh, I see what's he like straight away he was very offended. Yeah, because right? this he guy I know. Put his I hand on remember. his stomach and went, Oh, well, uh, and started making excuses and I was like, Oh no no, I see what's happened here. <laughs> Lewis thinks this is a compliment because you was, thought he oh he looked better. Yeah, he right, he looked great. Yeah, he'd been hitting the gym, he looked great in a t shirt or whatever. But uh, the other guy got very self conscious and insecure very quickly, and you were still like, Oh, I'm the best guy ever. I've complimented <laughs> on his on his pecs and his guns. <laughs> yeah. Like just bloke of the year. Yeah. And um Here's the thing, though. He didn't get that. And then I think you followed it up with another fat joke, which didn't help. 
<laughs> yeah, look, I, I saw his insecurity and I was like, you know what'll fix this better? I'll just double down and call him a chubster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Didn't work very well. No. And I think on behalf of just everyone listening and more just our show's reputation in general, mm. please seize this behavior and have a think before you call someone we call out someone for gaining weight. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea, mate. I'm going to keep that in mind for the rest of the show. Mm. And uh, now I'm just, now whenever whenever someone looks severely underweight, mm. I'm going to be like, oh, mate, you're on a diet. Keep yeah. going. Hey, Lewis, <laughs> just yeah. quickly before we go to a song, yeah. have you lost weight? <laughs> yes, I have. You're a bit offended. See, it's not great. It's <laughs> on the other end, is it? All right, we'll fight about this during the song. Just <laughs> look at Lewis. Now, uh, Luke, you're, we're both stand-up comedians. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Comedy Festival's coming up pretty soon, and uh, you've got a show, don't you? Yes, uh, because I can. There's uh, that the name the Melbourne of the show? Comedy Festival is what it's called. Sorry, mate. Gonna just stop you there. Yeah. Were you just trying to plug your show? Well, Big Market, uh, new show on Fox. Um, why not? Free plug. Yeah, and you think you, think you deserve a plug on, um, on Fox FM at 10 p.m.? Until midnight. Right. Well, this it's, giant ele- it's eleven forty right now. Well, exactly. Get the a clock. Do you the deserve... show's almost over, and you think? <laughs> <laughs> Do you deserve to even be on radio? I don't even know what time it is, mate. If <laughs> someone's probably like, "Is it ten pm? I'm very late." <laughs> Mate, no one's going to want to see the show of a guy who hangs out with a dude who can't read a clock, all yeah. right? So you're already failing there, so don't try and plug this show. That's usually not what's on people's requirements. I mean, I hope this comedian's funny, but also hope his friend can tell the time. <laughs> Look, mate, what I'm trying to say is I don't think you sh- should be able to plug your tickets on our radio show. I okay. mean, are you going to give me a cut of ticket sales? Uh, absolutely not. Well, then I don't think you should be able to plug it. In fact, what, Do you have what? anything to plug? No. I, well, I have a few things to plug, but uh, I, I'm not going to do it on this radio show. Okay. That's for sure. I mean, people pay good money to advertise on here. Why do you think you deserve to plug your show? I mean, it's expensive to promote a comedy festival show. I have over a thousand tickets to sell, and that's yeah. very nerve-wracking as a performer. Well, I don't think telling the 12 listeners we have is going to help very much. No, it's not. <laughs> You might make 20 bucks if one person comes. <laughs> but I could, <laughs> I, could spend, I could spend it on stuff. Yeah, well, what, what would you spend it on? I don't know, like a Lamborghini. Yeah? I, I, not like a, the car, like a Hot Wheels Lamborghini yeah. with the track included. Ah, oh, the track included. Are you sure you really I want Googled to splash it. out pretty, that much? Pretty expensive. Retails from fifty nine ninety nine. dollars Hot Wheels track. Mm. That's very expensive. I don't, look, here's the thing, Luke. I don't think that... Also food. Yeah, you're going to buy food with it? What, mm-hmm. you, what type of food? Tim Tams. Yeah, I just don't Their think... Their prices are going up. Inflation's killing me, man, and I need this plug. All right? <laughs> Mate, I'm, I, I'm not going to give you the plug, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is I think that really there probably are a lot of people out there listening to the show that might deserve a plug more than you. You think a... there's people more deserving of the plug than the person who's worked hard enough to have a show at 10 p.m. on a Sunday night. Yes, I think I do. I think they're driving around. They're probably working currently on the way to plug things, and they need a plug for their event that they're organizing, mm. and I think they might deserve it more than you. So how about this, Luke? Unlikely, but continue. Well, okay, how about this? 131060, give us a call. Do you have an event that needs a plug more than Luke's comedy show? If you give us a call <laughs> and you can explain to <laughs> us why you deserve a plug, because we only have one plug per show... If you, if you have a, an event that you're organizing, if you've got a and house party or <laughs> that, that really needs a plug. Corey Worthington, give us a call. <laughs> or, or <laughs> if you want to plug a new gab. Um, but no, yeah, if you have like a school play or an amateur theater production, a fundraiser, Anything maybe you've got a, a sporting club registration coming up, or does your new uni club need a plug? Uni's coming back. Yeah. Uh, so not only do you have to explain what your plug is, but why do you need it more than Luke? Or if you Unlikely, know, though, that you'll need it more than me, but if you can somehow top... Uh, look, it's... Yeah, give us a plug. Look, give, give us a call, yeah. and then you can perhaps give us a plug. But we unlikely. might let you plug it if we mm. if we think it's more deserving. Who decides? Of so if you got, oh, you. you can decide, or or we should. I'll, I'll decide because I mean, if I decide, I'll just give myself the plug. That's true. You're very biased. So if you know, if you have anything that needs a plug, if you need someone to use your list at a nightclub, if you bought a second hand television and it came without a plug, give us a call. <laughs> 131060. It's the best joke I've ever told. <laughs> this is Luke and Luke. Luke, you've got a comedy festival show coming up. Yep. Uh, tell us about it. Uh, Melbourne Comedy Stop Festival. Stop you there, mate. Uh, 
<laughs> you are trying to earn a plug on our show. Don't try and come in here and try and plug your show, all right? It's yep. a big network that we're on. You need to earn a plug. I've got over a 1,000 seats to sell, so we threw it out to the listeners. Uh, well, Lewis threw it out, saying, do you have something that's more deserving of a plug than Luke? And we will decide if I get to plug my show or a listener gets to plug whatever they're doing. So we're going to go to our caller, Cam. What do you have to plug that is more deserving of than Luke's show? Uh, hey, Lewis, I've got my Instagram to plug. Oh, <laughs> very good. I like this. How many followers do you have? I Just under 430 at oh, the moment. Right. It does need a plug. Now, Cam, can you tell us why do you deserve a plug for your inst- Why do you need more Instagram followers more than Luke needs money to survive? Because my Instagram name, I won't say it yet, yep. is he out of this the world. Out, it's out of this world. Oh, I would like I to mean, know. I mean, this... it's pretty good. It's pretty. Okay, good. so you're saying if I give you this plug, I'll get to know what your Instagram name is. Yeah, and it'll be worth it. Okay, well, how are you feeling, Luke? Look, I sold four tickets in the song anyway because we just <laughs> talked about my comedy festival show. <laughs> so give Cam the plug. <laughs> All right, Cam, you've won the plug. What's your Instagram? Grab me some bacon. Oh, that's Go and follow out, of, him. out of this world. Everyone follow Grab Me Some Bacon on Instagram. You'll listen to the Luke and Lewis show. That was Can Luke Earn a Plug? See you later. <laughs>